bullshit uh, at me. Come on, and obviously I'll, I'll need you through this. Now the Your nature of the show is you and I have a conversation. information in LaPorte County is 96.7 The Eagle at hometownnewsnow.com. Welcome to Sound Off on 96.7 The Eagle, LaPorte County's original social media. Sound Off is a public interest forum that encourages your voice to be heard on the topics and issues impacting our local communities. For the next 30 minutes, we invite you to be part of the conversation by calling 219-362-0522. And you can now text your questions to the Liquor Vault on air line or by email to soundoff at 967theeagle.com. This is a topic-based program, and we ask that you keep your comments brief, concise, and related to the topic being discussed. The views expressed on Sound Off are those of the host or callers and do not represent the opinion of 96.7 The Eagle, Spoon River Media, LLC, or the sponsors. The Liquor Vault on air line is now open for your calls or texts at 219-362-0522. This is Sound Off on 96.7 The Eagle. Hello, welcome, friends. This is Sound Off. My name is Nate Lauks. Welcome to the show. Today is Friday, October 28th. It's a beautiful day in LaPorte County and uh, Porter County and St. Joe County, wherever you're listening, it's good to have you with us. We're continuing our candidate forum shows where we're introducing you to some of the candidates on your ballot this November. The election is not very far away. And so as you're making your mind up who you want to vote for and support, hopefully these shows and this podcast and whether you're listening to live or with us through the podcast will help inform your vote a little bit more again it is your vote you get to vote for who you believe whether it's in a local election like a township trustee or a statewide election like today's conversation secretary of state it's your vote you get to vote for who you believe is the best candidate today on the show we've got destiny wells who's a democratic candidate for secretary of state destiny how are you today hey great thanks for having me yeah it's good to have you so um it, you know it's really interesting as i was reading your bio so much of your story obviously you're you're not from northern indiana here in the uh northwest indiana corridor but our our county is a very interesting county land mass we've got a lot in laporte county uh population about one hundred and ten thousand. but we've got pockets of urban we've got michigan city and laporte and a lot of rural areas as well it says in your biography here that you're you're kind of a a, a person of both worlds as well you live in the city of, in indianapolis but you're the daughter of an eighth generation farmer. So, so tell me a little bit how both of those worlds have intersected for you and, and, and how that has impacted your candidacy. Right, well, I think it's so important to have lived in both of those places when trying to communicate with Hoosiers at large across the state, right? So, um, you know, I, I drive all around Indiana. I was just in Porter County last night and then went over to Lake County and then went back over to Porter County <laughs> and came back home here to Indy. Um, and so, you know, my parents still live um, down where I'm from in Morgan County. And my dad still farms. He's trying to finish up the season here. And then I now live downtown um, in Indianapolis. And so that helps because, you know, um, as a, a candidate, we're trying to reach different types of Hoosiers, different types of communities. And there's always this friction um, amongst the electorate you know, of the urban counties that tend to be more blue, uh, like Marion County, and then Lake and over to you um, there in Laporte up on the border. Uh, it used to be Vanderburg, but it's uh, been turning more red and a couple other counties. And so there's that, there's um, that perspective but then there are uh, the majority of counties in Indiana of the 92 counties are red Republican counties and with a lot of rural area. And so you need to be able to um, empathize with where both types of voters are coming from. And I think having lived in both places now, it has only made me a better candidate. So you're running for Secretary of State, and we're going to get into some of that uh, as well, because, again, election issues have, have certainly been... Uh, a topic du jour of the last four to five, six years. And even even before that, if we're being honest, um, you know, I was reading an article not too long ago 
from I think 2014, where many of the Democrats, uh, who again were were running at the time, were talking about election security issues, but not so much for you know as as former President Trump would say, you know, elections being stolen today. It was more for foreign influence, and I, I do want to get to some of that. Um, but but I, I also want to talk a little bit about you're a Democrat, right? You're running for a statewide office. The last Democrat to win Secretary of State was Joe Hogsett, in, who was uh, you know, in, down in Indianapolis with you, 1989-1994. Uh, um, what made you want to run? Right. Well, I definitely did not grow up saying I wanted to be Secretary of State. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, this is a technocratic administrative office. It's really only um, since 2020 and the post-election ordeal um, with uh, efforts to subvert elections that Secretary of State positions became of such importance to upholding our democracy across the U.S. Now, um, people often ask me, you know, hey, there's this supermajority Republican legislature. Democrats haven't had this office in a long time. And not only have they not had this office, they've not had any statewide office um, for at least a decade. At least they have won it. Uh, I think the last statewide official uh, was Glenda Ritz as mm -hmm. uh, superintendent of education, and that is no longer an elected mm -hmm. position. Um, <laughs> Not because of Glenda per se, it was, it was, you know, Jennifer McCormick, a Republican, was the last person to hold that position, and she now is a Democrat. Um, so, you know, Joe Hogsett, Mayor Hogsett down here in Indy, uh, was at our kickoff and endorsed our candidacy right away. And, you know, um, like you said, it's been over 30 years. And so this office really called to me to run run for it um, because of these unprecedented times, because my background is in the military and as an attorney. And this office today running for it really just feels um, like an extension of uniform. And I tell people we were never meant to be a two party system. We've been living in a one party system and that's uh, largely to do now with these poor public outcomes that we're living. You know, we're ranked um, last across our report card in many categories especially um, health, uh, environment, and then also, um, you know, we also have this awfully low voter turnout, which we can go into more, but so there is just this great opportunity to run for Secretary of State for one, to um, uh, open up access to voting, get more voter engagement, but also to just safeguard the office um, from uh, threats of election subversion down the road. So your race here for we're talking to Destiny Wells, uh, Destiny Wells, who's the Democratic candidate for secretary of state. And again, for those of us that are politicos that like to follow this kind of stuff, your race is certainly an intriguing one. Uh, I think it was back in October that uh, the state house filed did a, a poll uh, on the secretary of uh, state race. And I, I do want to tell our listeners uh, on Monday, we have Jeff Marar, who's the libertarian candidate, will be on the show. We have reached out to the Republican candidate, Diego Morales. He has not uh, uh, gotten back to us or, or wanted to be on this show yet, um, but but we did reach out. But anyway, this poll in October suggested that essentially in that three-way race, there were a significant amount of undecided still, but you did lead. And so for many people, again, following the race, to see a Democrat leading in a race is a very intriguing thing. Even in that, many conservatives or many Republicans seem to have, you know, caught on to your campaign a little bit. Why do you think that is? Well, I think we've been doing a great job. Um, I may be biased, <laughs> <laughs> but I think maybe too the proof is in the the polling numbers, right? Um, because this this position, like I had said before, is supposed to be administrative. Uh, you know, it was not meant to be this partisan charged office, and we've been running on this um, platform, you know, of being a professional first and a partisan second. And I think it is resonating across the aisle because of what my opponent is offering, right? If it was a Republican running um, on a reasonable platform, I don't, it would not be this high contrast of a race. It wouldn't be getting this much attention. If my opponent wasn't an election denier, a member of the America First Secretary of State Coalition that is beholden to getting Donald Trump back into office, uh, members like Doug Mastriano from Pennsylvania, Mark Fincham from Arizona, both uh, in attendance at the January um, 6 uh, events at the Capitol then 
Republicans wouldn't be scratching their head and wondering, should I be voting for my own party? Um, that's why we have this chunk of undecideds because uh, you know Jeff and I are um, polling well. Uh, I'm pulling off uh, independents two to one. Um, those that just can't bring themselves across the aisle are, are choosing Jeff. <laughs> and so what we have now is um, this this chunk of voters that kind of keep us I think keep me up at night and that is the disaffected moderate who just has not decided how they're going to vote uh you know this race is really hard to message um one is just not flashy it's not a it's it's not a legislative race right that's what also keeps republicans more open to the idea of voting across the aisle for me right it's i'm not setting um like social policy i'm not legislating um, i'm really upholding the administration of the office and so that one it's not flashy um unless you understand the national security threat, you know, of it being the chief election officer, but a lot of people are just busy living their everyday lives and they're not paying attention. And so it becomes very expensive and it's hard to raise a lot of money for a down ballot race like this, unless there is national attention on the race. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're seeing a lot of uh, those donations come in. Indiana is not receiving national attention. Um, because it, it's not a battleground state. And, yeah. and we can talk about that more. Um, but this is what is um, presenting this opportunity really to, to bring over Republicans. However, uh, that does take resources. And you have to get eyeballs on the office. Um, we're up on cable up in Northwest uh, Indiana in the Chicago market. We're on cable statewide. Um, we're on broadcast in the indie market and looking to enter another market here in the coming days and we're on digital. Um, but even if we look to the north, uh, Jocelyn Benson, Secretary of State of Michigan, you know, kind of the superstar secretary that became very popular um, during the um, 2020 vote. I think uh, she's the one, Jocelyn's the one who uh, then, well, um, who the former president uh, made kind of threats toward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And she has a $5 million budget. And even with that $5 million budget, um, she is saying that 80% of, of voters, Michiganders, don't know that her opponent is an election denier. Mm -hmm. And so the the um, concern is that voters will just walk into the, into the booth and pull Republican. Be, and that's what this office usually tends to be the outcome is the party that carries the ticket really is the party that wins. Um, and so very unique situation, but we've been taking full advantage of. And like you said, in our polling, we're, we're sitting pretty well, just making sure we're getting um, eyeballs seen at this point. All right. We've got Destiny Wells, who's candidate, Democratic candidate for Secretary of State for Indiana here. Again, we're not taking calls today, but if you do have a question, we're going to get some of your questions. 219-362-0522. You're welcome to text me or email me at soundoff at 967theagle.com. Um, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and then I want to talk about election security. Um, because, again... Uh, 10 years ago, maybe eight years ago, a lot of Democrats were, were also talking about the need for more election security. And then that kind of a little bit different when the former President Trump was running. And now um, I want to talk kind of a, a little bit about brass tacks, about what the state needs. And, and if you were elected, what, what would you do? But we're going to take our first commercial break. We'll be right back here on 96.7 The Eagle. This is Council. After 50 years of teaching and coaching, I know and see the passion that Connie Gramarosa has for LaPorte County. In the next couple of days leading up to the election, you will hear Connie's opponent talking about accomplishments that are simply false. Nothing but a smokescreen. Don't be fooled. Instead of talking about the election, you will hear Connie's opponent talking about accomplishments that are simply false. Nothing but a smokescreen. Don't be fooled. Instead of talking about the giveaway of the county home for $50,000, her tax increase of 50% on garbage recycling, her failure to support the police, fire, EMS, and public safety issue. Connie Gramarosa is a woman of integrity. She has the experience that it takes to hit the ground running. She is a proven leader that gets results and will serve you full time. I respectfully ask for your support for Connie Gramarosa. Paid for by friends of Connie Gramarosa. 
Keep your floors scratch-free and looking their best with help from Menards. Shepherd Hardware is known as a recognized leader in floor protection. Menards carries a great selection of caster wheels, furniture sliders, and more protective products. Defend your floors against damage today with 11% off all floor protection products from Shepherd Hardware. Good through October 30th. Savings are a mail-in rebate. Some exclusions apply. See store for details. Save big money at Menards. Hi, this is Andy Hynek, candidate for LaPorte County Sheriff. As a military veteran and a 22-year member of the Sheriff's Office who has worked in every division, I believe I have the experience to be your next Sheriff. My goals once elected are reduce recidivism amongst the inmates, expand our mental health services, and focus on the heroin epidemic. I've dedicated my life to serving our community, and I'm asking for your support. Please vote Andy Hynek for Sheriff. Paid for by the committee to elect Hynek Sheriff. You wouldn't sign a contract without reading it. So why are our elections certified before we completely audit them? Currently, only five out of 92 counties get audited at the end of each election cycle, but the results don't get reported. I'm Jeff Moore, and I'm running for Indiana Secretary of State. As your Secretary of State, I want you to have a receipt for your vote, an independent audit of all 92 counties, and impartial election results you can trust. I will champion Hoosier small businesses so our entrepreneurs can build their dreams and feed their families. Hoosiers deserve a Secretary of State they can count on. This November, vote for me, Jeff Maurer, for Secretary of State. Call or text me at 317-721-6438 or visit MaurerForIndiana.com. I'm Jeff Maurer and I approve this message. This announcement paid for by Maurer for Indiana. Stuck in a job that sucks? Here's another job opportunity from hometownnewsnow.com. Oh man, Aerospace is ramping up for a comeback in LaPorte with open interviews being held Wednesday, November 2nd from 7 to 9 a.m. and 2 to 4 p.m. Almed is a state-of-the-art facility producing engine parts for the commercial aerospace, defense, and space industries. Again, that's Wednesday, November 2nd at Halmet Aerospace, where your career takes flight. This has been a Jobs Spotlight Extra. Look under Hot Topics at hometownnewsnow.com for job details. This is Randy Novak. I respectfully ask for your vote for LaPorte County Council. I will work hard with an informed, common sense approach to provide the highest level of service at the lowest possible cost to the taxpayers. Quality of life starts with local government and experience does matter. I have professional experience specific to public services and managing their multi-million dollar budgets. I take each issue into careful consideration and work in a bipartisan way to find the best solution. I need your support to keep a positive, common sense approach to county government. Vote Randy Novak for LaPorte County Council District 2. Thank you for tuning in to Sound Off. You can now text or email your questions directly to the studio. Call or text 362-0522 or email your questions to soundoff at 967theeagle.com. This is Sound Off. Welcome back, friends. We've got Destiny Wells on the show today, and we are talking to her a little bit about the Secretary of State race. She's the Democratic candidate for Indiana Secretary of State. If you have a question, you could text me at 209-362-0522 or email me at soundoff at 967theeagle.com. Um, Destiny, I do have a question for you. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about election security, election issues. Uh, as our listeners might may or may not know, the function of the Secretary of State, there's certainly more than one of them, but one of the primary ones, and the one that probably gets the most attention, is um, running our elections. And, you know, again, we, we have this conversation about election security, the need. Uh, there was an ad, I don't know if you listened to it, but uh, by one of your opponents, uh, Jeff Moran, we're going to have him on the show on Monday, and we'll talk about this, about auditing these kind of things. There's all kinds of different ideas about um, how to increase security um, in, in elections. But I, I want to even bring it back further than that. There is growing um, mistrust of whether elections are secure or not. And I want to ask you, do you believe that in Indiana our elections are secure and ran well? I, I do believe that they're secure and there are um, – efforts made by the Secretary of State's office right now. Uh, there is a cybersecurity program. Uh, you know, they do incur threats. They are very transparent about the number of threats that they receive and that they um, neutralize or mitigate. So there will always be threats to um, our 
election infrastructure. Uh, but in Indiana, so far, it has been secure. And I will also say nationally, you know, because of the mistrust in the system, I point people toward the over 60 court cases um, that have been litigated and shown that there has never been a concerted effort for fraud. And so I want to just kind of, you know, um, tease those things out because you reference Jeff's commercial mm -hmm. and Jeff's commercial doesn't really talk about election security. Um, you know, post-election audits um, and receipts are a little bit different when in the realm of security, but we can get further. Yeah, and I, I do have that actually, because again, um, I, I want to talk a little bit about what improvements. Uh, th this used to be a bipartisan conversation, and there have been legislation put forth in the, you know, in the uh, House of Representatives and in the, uh, or in, in the United States for different bipartisan election bills, these kind of things, and some of them get a little bit of traction, many of them don't. Um, where do you stand then on the need for things like ballot receipts? Um, a lot of people have said, you know, maybe it'd be a good idea to have a printed receipt, A, either confirming that you voted, um, or B, confirming who you voted for. What are your thoughts for that? Well, um, first, I just want to say my qualifications in this area. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so yeah, please do. Thinking that I'm some secretary of state <laughs> candidate who doesn't have any qualifications. Um, you know, I reference my military experience. My military experience is actually very applicable um, to, to, to this area um, because I've been a military intelligence officer for now almost 20 years, uh, almost ni uh, 19 and some change. And, you know, with that, I've held a top secret security clearance for 15, 16 of those years and a lot of my foundational training is in information security, cyber security. Um, so I'm a huge proponent of following federal best practices um, because Indiana right now is not following federal best practices across the board. Indiana actually has multiple different types of um, election infrastructure within the state, depending on the county you are in. You may be, um, you know, using a ballot marking device here down in Marion County. You may be using um, uh, a direct recording electronic machine in the majority of Indiana counties. And now we have put a VV pad on it, which is a voter fire viable paper audit trail. It's like a roll of paper so you can see what you voted. Um, and so we have like these five, like four or five different standards and makes it very difficult in the state of Indiana um, from the top down to make sure that everybody is doing the right thing, right? Because it's kind of up to the county clerk's interpretation. It's also depending on the vendor of the type of machine. And so the best thing that we can do in Indiana is first streamline our process right, um, to get everybody singing and um, from the same sheet of music. And we do not have that right now. Mm -hmm. So you asked me specifically about um, Jeff's idea for a, a receipt, right? He says, you should, and it's on his commercial, you need to have a receipt so that you can track down your vote. Um, look, this is, I, li, the, the thing about the libertarian platform is libertarian platform is a bit pie in the sky. It is not even feasible um, with the budget and the money that is um, available to implement an entire receipt system. And then on top of that, an entire 92 county audit. Um, we already have post-election audits within the state of Indiana. 10% of um, elections are audited. It is very transparent, um, you know, to an extent where the Secretary of State um, reports back to the people the efficacy of that audit and what it found. Um, and so those have been passing. Now, what is the receipt going to do? Well, it's this thing of voter confidence, right? We we all are talking about voter trust and voter confidence. We're just talking about it from very different perspectives. Um, so I'm not a proponent of the receipt. I think we need to be doing work on the front end of the process. If we were doing our jobs as Secretary of State um, and as election administrators throughout the counties, then you wouldn't feel you needed a receipt. This receipt is just a feel good measure because over the last years, we have destroyed voter confidence um, in government um, because of very 
partisan agendas. Uh, and so you have the public has been led to believe that it should not be trusting elections. We need to get a professional into the Secretary of State's office who is restoring that trust in a responsible way. Civic engagement, civic education, um, anti-disinformation campaigns, because that is one of the biggest uh, threats to uh, our government and our society right now is disinformation. Uh, so that work, like I said, needs to be on the front end of the system, um, not a Band-Aid as a receipt on the back end. All right. We've got Destiny Wells on the show today. Uh, she's a candidate, Democratic candidate for Secretary of State. On Monday will be Jeff Marar, who is a Libertarian candidate for Secretary of State as well. It's good to have you on the show. Um, here's a question for you. Um, uh, what is your stance on an associate uh, from uh, a, a law firm for the county attorney also being on the election board for the county? Uh, I don't know if you understand that question, but I can I can parse it out for you a little bit. But essentially, the, the question, the impetus of the question is here in LaPorte County, uh, one of the, the law firms f hired um, for the county attorney that work for the commissioners also has a person from that law firm on the election board. Do you see a conflict of interest in that? I'm sorry, but I would just have to research that yeah. that issue more to be able to just stay light yeah. on the air off the top of my head, no, um, whether there's conflict there. I mean, I will say that attorneys are, are one of the, the best professions of making sure um, that they are doing ethical um, practices, that they are avoiding conflicts of interest. We have rules, um, you know, that guide attorneys um, that we are not not only guide us but that we have to um answer for um in front of the disciplinary commission and so if anybody is uncomfortable about something that an attorney is doing um and they think they have standing to come to to um, bring this forward they can there there are mechanisms for you to put that issue forward and have um you know legal professionals look at that and make a judgment call if you feel that some ethics rules are being violated here's another question from one of our listeners do you support the democrat voting bill voting rights bill that is proposed at the federal house of representatives also known as hr1 so that our, i'm the john lewis voting rights act um has a lot of great parts to it right um especially in a state like indiana where we are partisan gerrymandered um ridiculously <laughs> uh so i would be uh, a proponent of entertaining um some type of federal legislation that could fix some of the issues at the state level. However, I am not a proponent of federalizing uh, state elections, but I tell people in Indiana all the time, look, the John Lewis Voting Rights Act is not going to come save us. Um, and so we have to be our own advocates. We have to save ourselves, right? Um, we have to look to like 2031 when there will be redistricting and start um, laying the groundwork now for nonpartisan redistricting. Uh, and, you know, we also need to, um, I need to, when I get in the office, do a fact-finding mission as to why are we even in the situation why, that we have multiple different types of um, voting procedures and standards throughout the state of Indiana. Um, so again, um, when it comes to federal legislation, you know, it has, there's, there's the good and there is the bad, and we would advocate the best we can for the state of Indiana. All right, one more question on voting, and then uh, we'll take a commercial break and get to some of the, the other roles of the Secretary of State again, as is important to point out that elections are certainly probably the, the, the hot button topic of a Secretary of State, but there's certainly more to do for a Secretary of State. But my final question for elections is, uh, voting turnout is often abysmal. Uh, especially in non-presidential election years. Is there anything the Secretary of State can do to encourage more people to vote or to make it easier to vote? Right, so I'm going through all the state of Indiana and this is our platform. Yeah, it's in our marketing. We're all purple, you know, um, this campaign. And I'm going through and saying, Indiana, you're not a red state. You are a purple state with a voter turnout problem. Um, we are 46 in the nation in registered voter turnout in 2020, in, not in a midterm year, in, in a presidential when the stakes seem existentially high, between 1.6 and 1.7 million registered Hoosiers stayed home for whatever reason, um, and they did not vote. 
So part of that is what can the Secretary um, of State do to help those voter participation levels um, be better so that we're um, not in the bottom of the country? And because when we don't show up to vote, look, we have these issues with our, our public outcomes. And so um, I look to states that are doing it right and there are states states that are using the secretary of state's office in a responsible way to engage um the electorate engage the citizenry in educating why the why voting is important um you know doing coordination with nonprofits uh with colleges with other key stakeholders throughout the state um in making sure that we are doing the best we can in our voter registration efforts um so there is definitely room for improvement um and the secretary of state does have the latitude to engage these issues um and make sure that we are working on having a more engaged indiana population so absolutely all right we're going to take a final commercial break of the show and then get back and i want to talk about some of these other roles of the secretary of state um and what you think about them and maybe some ideas you might have to either improve them or evolve them if you were elected we've got destiny wells on the show she's the democratic candidate for secretary of state again you can text me at 219-362-0522 or email me at sound off at 967eagle.com if you have a question for the candidate we're going to be back in just a few minutes. Please do listen to these candidate commercials because, again, you know, they've been trying their hardest to get you to listen. All right. We'll be right back. Hello. I'm Sheila Brilson Matias. I'm running for re-election for your LaPorte County Commissioner. You know, experience matters. And as a two-term mayor, a teacher, and a business leader, I have what it takes to be your voice at the table. I negotiated hard with Blue Chip and other major companies on your behalf. I've kept a sharp eye on your tax dollars and brought thousands of jobs to our LaPorte County. I've done it before, I'm doing it now, and I know how to do it again. I'm proud to be known as a go-getter, a team builder, and a straight shooter who's focused on getting things done. You know me. I've lived in LaPorte County for more than 35 years. I've raised my children here. You've seen me and chatted with me at games, at our festivals, at the grocery store, and even at the gas pump. This is Sheila Brilson Matias, and I would appreciate your vote for re-election as your LaPorte County Commissioner on November 8th. Paid for by the committee to re-elect Sheila Matias. Hey, LaPorte County, Surf's fiber internet is more reliable and 25 times faster than cable. Get one gig speed and two free Eero whole home Wi-Fi routers for only $65 a month. No contracts and free installation at a price that's locked for life. That's right. The price you pay today won't jump up each year like cable. They are expanding to more neighborhoods every day. Visit surfinternet.com to check your address or call 844-955-SURF for details. That's 844-955-SURF. This is a limited time offer and restrictions may apply. Vote Fagan 2022. Who is Sean Fagan? He's a lawyer. He's a Republican. Sean Fagan, running for LaPorte County Prosecutor 2022. Sean Fagan knows that LaPorte County is a great place to live, and he wants to keep it that way. Sean Fagan for LaPorte County Prosecutor 2022. Be safe. Be strong. Let's work together. Vote Sean Fagan 2022. This message paid for by Fagan for Prosecutor. My name is Ryan Seberg, and I am running for the LaPorte School Board. I am a proud husband, father, and business owner who is deeply invested in the LaPorte community. I want to give back to the school corporation that has given my family so much, creating safe, nurturing, and supportive schools that provide an optimal learning environment for our teachers and kids is my top priority. I bring proven leadership and a businessman's approach to the board. On November 8th, vote Seberg for LaPorte School Board. Paid for by the committee to elect Ryan Seberg to school board. Diego Morales is living the American dream, a dream of freedom and opportunity that inspired him and his family to move to the United States more than two decades ago. Diego has served in the military, and he's worked in both the public and private sectors. Diego supports strong Hoosier values, and he's been a true conservative throughout his life. As your next Secretary of State, Diego Morales is committed to keeping our elections safe and secure. He will work with federal partners to push back against federal federal bureaucrats taking over Hoosier elections. He will work to protect and expand photo ID laws. Diego Morales will be committed to make sure in Indiana elections, it will be easy to vote and harder 
dare to cheat. I'm Diego Morales and I approve this message because America has been good to me and I'm ready to give back. Protecting the American dream starts at the ballot box and it's time to make the American dream a reality for all Hoosiers. Please vote for me, Diego Morales, for Secretary of State. Paid for by Diego for Indiana. Hi friends, Chief Deputy Ron Heeg here and your Republican candidate for LaPorte County Sheriff. I'm a 25-year veteran of the Sheriff's Office, starting my career within the jail, working my way through the ranks to my current role of having the honor to serve as Sheriff Boyd's Chief Deputy. My campaign consists of three strategic goals, public safety, personnel investment, and community investment. I'm married to my wife, Heather, and we live in Kingiki Township with our daughters, Olivia and Allison. I humbly ask for your vote on or before November 8th. Paid for by Heeg for Sheriff. Hi, I'm Connie Gramarosa, and I'm running for LaPorte County Commissioner, currently serving on the County Council. As a conservative, I have always asked the tough questions, being fiscally responsible with your tax dollars. I will serve with honesty and integrity and be an ambassador for all of LaPorte County. Serving is not just a mission, it's my passion. I ask for your vote on or before November 8th. I'm Connie Gramarosa, and I approve this message. Your forecast on 96.7 Eagle brought to you by Harmon Expert Auto Service. If you're looking for a local and quality auto repair company, then look no further than Harmon Expert Auto with two locations in LaPorte, 308 Washington or 111 Brighton Streets. Visit their website at HarmonExpertAutoService.com or call 325-0444. Missiana Weather. High temperatures reach up to 59 this afternoon. Under sunny skies, winds out of the east, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Lows level off around 35 tonight. Tomorrow, high of 62. From the Weather Center at hometownnewsnow.com. Right now, 55. We're waiting to hear from you. Dial or text 362-0522 and let us know what you think. That's 362-0522. Back to Sound Off on 96.7 The Eagle. Welcome back to our final segment of Sound Off for the day. We've got candidate Destiny Wells, who's a Democratic candidate for... Uh, Secretary of State here in Indiana, uh, talking about her candidacy. Uh, Candidate Wells, I do want to tell you uh, on behalf of uh, my producer here, Rick Anthony, uh, who's also who's a, a veteran as well, a 20-year Air Force veteran, uh, thank you for your service. Uh, I know you're still, I believe, a lieutenant colonel in the military as well, are you? Right, yeah. I um, teach with the Army Command and General Staff College, so I we have majors that have to complete their education so they can get promoted too. And I, I take great joy in that. And also as a um, Afghanistan combat veteran too. So thank him for his service. And you're you're over here making me listen to all my opponent's commercials. I know, right? <laughs> I know, it's, I can tell you, it's it's uh, the commercial breaks are getting longer and longer, so. Well, I do wanna, I do wanna say, I, I listened to Diego's, I think this is about this, this second time I've heard it now. And mm-hmm. you know, he wants, he says in it, he wants to, um, you know, uh, strengthen our voter ID laws. And I just, I just want to point out that Indiana is already one of eight states. It was the first one of the first state. It was actually our state was litigated in the Supreme Court when photo ID was uh, said it was constitutional, um, that we already have the strictest voter ID. (laughs) So um, if we're going to make it even stricter, I, I don't know how you do that. We already require a government provided photo ID with an expiration date, which is largely limited to a license or a voter ID card if you go get it at the BMV and a couple of other exceptions like your military ID. Um, I have heard him say that he wants you to now prove your citizenship um, when you register. So you wouldn't just need that photo ID, you would also need uh, just a handful of those documents that prove prove citizenship like a birth certificate, um, which is not done. and would obviously just further um, suppress people from being able to vote. Um, I, I think it's I think it's so vital to to talk about these election issues, especially as again these conversations continue to happen federally and statewide. And as our listeners should know, you know, again we've got federal legislation for elections, but there are a lot of um, control that states have. But secretaries of state do also have to work with their legislator. But I want to get into some of these other things. Um, because the Secretary of State does not just deal with elections. Obviously, a, a significant role is dealing with elections, but one of the roles is business services, right? Um, and they um, help charter, you know, the filing of new businesses, uh, commercial liens, 
um, trademarks, uh, notaries, republic. As you deal with some of this, as, as you look into some of these, do you have any ideas for the non-election stuff that you think would help um, either make this office more efficient uh, for those that are running businesses or those looking into these services, or, you know, again, um, just make it in general better for uh, Hoosiers? Right. Yeah, I mean, look, this office is supposed to be an office of customer service. Uh, it interfaces with the public and providing services within the different divisions. And you've asked about the business services division. Um, a lot of people know the Secretary of State's office through, um, you know, the initial formation of their small business and using InBiz.com. So InBiz was pretty cutting edge when it came out, got, got awards, um, but it, they never really updated updated it. It is long overdue for a version 2.0. And that's just not me saying this. This is me sitting down with the vendor who supplies the technology and um, other people who have, who have worked with the Secretary of State's office and in biz and that um, we could do a great service to Hoosiers if we updated that website. And so we often talk about, you know, the Secretary of State's office not being a legislative position. Obviously, we highlighted before there's a supermajority Republican legislature. So as a Democratic Secretary of you have to be um, resourceful and, and improve the everyday Hoosier experience as a customer in the office. And you can do that through um, improving technology, being more innovative, um, more forward looking. And these are things that I want to make sure to implement into the office um, so that, like I said, we can do our jobs professionally first, mm -hmm. partisanship, politics second. Um, and that is having a great customer experience um, with setting up your small business in the state of Indiana. Well, we've just got a couple minutes left. Uh, candidate Destiny Wells uh, for Democratic uh, Secretary of State candidate here. Um, I'm going to give you the final word, but I, I imagine you're incredibly busy. So I want to say it's been a joy talking to you and I, I wish you all the luck in the world for uh, this election. Um, and as all the candidates will be on or the other candidate, Jeff Marar, will be on, uh, we've not successfully had Diego Morales uh, tell us he'll be on. But I, I want to say again, it's been a joy to have you on. Uh, I imagine you won't get a lot of sleep between now and election night. So again, to take the time to come on this show, to talk to LaPorte uh, County residents is a big deal. But I want to give you uh, the final word. What do you want our listeners um, and potential voters to know about you and uh, your race and how can they find out more? I want voters to realize that the Secretary of State's office um, will will um, be their next four years of voting. What do they want their next four years of voting to look like? Do they want to continue to have access to voting um, or do they want games with their, their voting, um, partisan games? I'm running as a professional first, and like I said, partisan second, and I will always be country first. And so, like I said, this office running for it is an extension of uniform. I can think of no other place I'd rather be than this moment in time, um, pro protecting democracy in my own backyard. Uh, so there is one pro-democracy candidate on the ballot this year, and that is me. Um, so please vote to safeguard your elections and take them off the partisan chessboard. They were never meant to be wielded as a tool for political gain. They are your right to vote. So please vote for Destiny for Secretary of State. And where can they find you online? Wells for Indiana.com. That's Wells, F O R Indiana.com. You can go donate, you can volunteer, and you can just find out a lot more information about me as a candidate. All right. Thank you again so much for being on the show. On Monday, we'll have Jeff Marar on the show, Libertarian candidate for Secretary of State, and talk a little bit about his ideas. But I want to, again, thank you for making the time here. And thank you to our listeners. I wish you well, again, as you go to the voting uh, booth, as you vote early, if some of you, and if not, if you're just waiting to that day like I am, Election Day, to go vote, because there's just something about, for me, Election Day voting. I love it. Um, I hope you inform yourself. Again, learn about the candidates, whether it's here on this radio program, on this radio station, or hometownnewsnow.com, or it's somewhere else. Uh, you can't expect anybody to educate you on who to vote for. Uh, so I hope you reach out and find out more, whether it's a Republican, a Democrat, or a Libertarian, about the candidates so that you can know more and be more informed when you go into the ballot box. Thank you so much for listening. On this edition of Sound Off, the views on Sound Off are those of the host or callers and do not represent the opinion of 96.7 The Eagle, Spoon River Media, LLC, or the sponsors. Sound Off airs every Monday and Friday.